Wer ist die Welt? Wieso ist der Himmel blau? Kann ein Stern auf Hügel leuchten? Hängen Energie und Zeit auf einer ignorten Weise zusammen? Wie kann die Sonne scheinen? Was passiert, wenn ich das Brot immer weiter schneide? Ist es weg? We always encounter the fact that very basic things that we thought are clear turn out to be an, an illusion. That makes part of the fascination for physics. That even our daily experience is not really completely understood. The Institute for Theoretical Physics consists of approximately 10 research groups. The Institute is part of the physics department, one of the departments of the ETH Zurich. There are more and more different areas of research in theoretical physics. There are more and more methods. And the Institute for Theoretical Physics tries to bring them all under one roof and tries to make sure that people communicate and exchange ideas. We are doing research in very different areas. It starts, for example, from the very small scale. There are, for example, particle physics. There's also condensed matter physics, and it goes up to very large scales. There is string theory. There are also abstract theories like quantum information. There are also very different methods that we use to explore these areas. Theoretical physics methods like mathematical and analytic methods, but we have also modern methods, numerical methods, computational physics, and we have also information theoretic methods that are motivated by computer science. This is a very new aspect that we have now very different methods coming from very different disciplines that we try to combine and use to solve the big questions. Quantum field theory is more or less a framework for computing fundamental processes in, say, particle physics. But myself and my group is more interested in, in the fundamental questions of this quantum field theory. How does it work? Why does it work? And also how to perform some calculations very efficiently. String theory is one of the attempts to perform this quantization of gravity. At its heart, it's actually a very simple idea. If you start with the concept of a point particle, you can easily extend that theoretically to, to a one-dimensional object, which then looks like a tiny piece of string. Then you're interested in the mechanics of, of these objects. One interesting aspect of that is that if you quantize string theory, gravity naturally pops out at some point. And that gives you a consistent quantization of, of gravity. I'm working in computational physics on the topic of quantum computers. And we have observed in the last century many quantum effects and now we try to harness these quantum effects in a quantum computer to speed up calculation. Especially because there are hard optimization problems which take a lot of time on classical computers, we want to use a quantum computer to solve these problems much faster. General quantum computers don't exist yet, but there are special quantum computers for specific types of optimization problems and these exist already. There is a Canadian company that sells these machines already and they cost between 10 and 50 million. Not available for everyone and only for a specific optimization problem. We try to figure out for which specific problems a quantum annealer would actually be faster than a classical computer. I perform simulations to see if one of the technologies will be winning in future against the other. Some of our research is kind of a little bit apart from an immediate experiment, but there's also research which connects to particular experiments. I've started working on something called artificial systems. So we look at strong interactions between light and matter. The interesting thing about where we are now in current matter is that it is driven by new developments in experimental physics where people fabricate artificial materials. These things can be controlled, they can be hit, they can be shaken, they can be rocked, you can do many things with them which you could never do with real materials. This thing opens a new door to a very new kind of physics which as theorists we find that it's really exciting to explore. The Institute provides a lot of possibilities to interact. There is for example the Pauli Center which provides funding to organize workshops. We have also many long-term visitors funded by the Institute and this enables a lot of exchange within the Institute but also internationally. It's a wonderful place because you have a lot of young students and postdocs who come from all over the world. The human interactions are very good, which help you actually find very good physics collaborations later too. Theoretical research has contributed enormously to the development of our civilization. If you think about the impact that quantum mechanics had or the impact that relativity theory had on today's daily life, and I think this will just continue. The questions we explore now will have a huge impact on a very fundamental level in 50 years. But what this will be specifically is very hard to predict. This is the nature of fundamental research.